Hello folks, Librarian Matthew Smith here. Today I'm going to talk to you about ASIA, the Applied Social Sciences Index and Abstracts. It's a database that many of you who are studying social science topics might be using, so I thought it would be useful to run a quick database primer for you. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. Now I'm going to start my search at a search engine to make this as accessible as possible. And I'm going to say we'll search for UEA Lib Guides. If you click onto this, you should see a result that looks a lot like the one on my screen. Now, if you're after just general searching guidance, I would encourage you to look at your subject guides. There will be one for each different discipline at UEA. But today, because I'm looking at a specific database, I'm going to jump past that and go to the A to Z of databases. Click onto this. I should get a list of all the different databases we have access to here at UEA. And these are filed A to Z. So for me, this is nice and easy because ASIA is going to be near the top. Here we go. So to access the database, all I've got to do is click through. If I hadn't logged on today already, it would prompt me to sign in with my UEA credentials, but because I have, it pushes me straight through to the database. So I will just accept these and I'll know I've done this right because it will say access provided by the University of East Anglia, the library at the top of your screen. If it doesn't, it means you've managed to log in through a different set of credentials. For example, if you are a student who works in the NHS as well as studying with us, you may have an NHS login and therefore you may have gone through and been automated to the NHS's version of ASIA. Searching it will give you exactly the same results, but what it will mean is when you come to try and get the full text, you'll be trying to get the text via the NHS rather than via us. And typically we tend to have a broader range of resources available. Now, in terms of actually searching, and I might just zoom this in a little bit, I think, in terms of searching, you are presented with the basic search immediately, but I always say go to the advanced search. You don't have to be doing a very complex search to make this worthwhile, so always skip over to the advanced search. Now, on the advanced search, if you've used the library catalogue and its advanced search functionality, you should be fairly comfortable here. We're able to add additional rows into the advanced search. And what you'll find is that you can type your terms into a box and then use the drop down to determine how deeply you're searching the papers. This is exactly the same as what you do in the library catalog. So let's say we're interested in, let's say, how adoption has been affected during the COVID-19 pandemic. Just as in the catalog, what we'll do is take one of our ideas, so I'll start with COVID-19 and put that into my top box, and I would think of alternative terms. So I'll say COVID-19 or pandemic. There are probably more that you could put in there, but just as an example, that will do the trick for me. I'll then go to the second box and put in my second idea, which in this case is adoption. Now, once again, there may be more terms I'd want to put in in real life, but for an example, this will do. So I will get any papers where within the record there is the term either COVID-19 or pandemic. That's what the or here is doing. And then like the catalogue, you have and pre-selected between boxes. So I'm getting COVID-19 or pandemic in the papers and also adoption. Finally, I might use my drop downs here to say, actually, I only want to see papers where COVID-19 or pandemic appear in the title. Don't have to do that, but just as a neat example. So I will run my search and it will give me some results, hopefully, to work with. And we'll see here that we've been given 117 results. So there are my results list over there. Now, from your results, you may actually want to do a couple of things. So the first and most likely is you may want to access full text. When that's the case, you'll see you've got a little link here. So ASIA is a database that won't contain full text itself, but will push you off to try and find full text through the UEA's holdings. So from the record here, I can hit get full text. And let's see if we're lucky with this one. OK, perfect. So it's pushed me straight through to a PDF. On occasion, it won't manage to do that. though. 
When that happens, you can always drop us a line and see if there's some other options for us to get access to the resource you're after. I talk more about that in other videos, but just so you know, there is normally an option. The other thing you might want to do from here is actually start saving some of these records to your own personal folder so that you can come back to them later on. In ASIA, you'll see there is a folder option up here. and There's also a profile icon. <clears throat> now, by default, you won't have an account with ASIA. <coughs> Excuse me. So at the moment, we're signed in, we're able to search, link through to resources, that's fine. But as soon as we want to start saving things, we will need our own profile. Now, if I click on this icon here, what I'll find is that there's a sign in option and also a create option. So if I click sign in, it will take me through. Here we go for me to log in. First time you come into ASIA, you will need to create an account. Creating an account on ASIA is just like anything else online. So it doesn't have to be your UEA email address that you use. You can put in whatever you want, personal email. The only thing you need to check is once again that UEA is at the top of the page when you sign in. Otherwise, it's going to prompt you to log in again. But once you've created your account, that's it done. Whenever you come in, you'll be able to use that to access your saved files. So for me, I already have a login. So let me pop my details in and then we can have a look at what we can do with the folder itself. All right, so it's actually taken me straight to my folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to here we go, the recent search that we've run. So I should just say, this icon here will show you your recent searches, i.e., <coughs> excuse me, those that you've done within this search session. So if you close your browser down, these will all be gone. But that gives me a neat way of getting back to the results that we had for our initial search. Now, from a results page, if we want to save any records, all we need to do is tick the box next to the line for the record we want to save. We can also save everything on the page if we prefer. Once we've done that, we can then file these into our research folder. So I click onto this and it will <coughs> ask me if I want to save into my generic all documents folder or if I want to create a subfolder. So if I'm doing a particular essay and I want to keep all the resources to do with that in one place, reasonable idea to create a new folder. But for me, I'm just going to drop them into my generic all documents. So we click save and that should move them over for me. Okay, perfect. So while that's moved them over, I can now click on my profile. I can see save documents. Come back into here. There we go. So I already had a few documents saved in here and that's added those additional three. Now, every time I log in, I can come back to these nice and easy. I've still got the full text link from here. The other thing I might want to do is create a citation. So if I tick the box, there is a cite option up here. And incidentally, you can also get the cite option from the results list. So you don't have to save it to your folder to do this. The citation tool will then automatically generate for you a reference in the style you choose. Harvard British Standards is the closest to UEA, but I'm going to be honest, it's not perfect. There are much better options out there, I think. So if you're going to use the auto generator on ASIA, be aware that you are going to have to check every reference and really just make sure it meets UEA criteria. So it's a starting point, but nothing more. The other really useful thing, though, on this page, and you may not have necessarily thought to look here for it, is that you have the option to export to a citation manager. So for example, if you use EndNote or Mendeley, maybe even Zotero or RefWorks, you can here export to RIS format, RIS, which is the best format for reference managers as it's a generic file type. So if you use Mendeley, but you want to give it to someone else who uses EndNote, it will work equally well for either of those. You can also export, export to Microsoft Excel if that's easier for you. Okay, and in terms of storing results, that's probably all you really want to do. The only other thing that I'll flag for you on the advanced search 
is that you have a really nice search tips icon that you can bring up and this will give you all of the details about different operators you may want to use. So in other databases you may be familiar with using things like proximity searches and things like this. In the guide here it will tell you the different things you're able to use, explain how to use them and when you might want to. So this is absolutely worth looking at if you are looking to develop a more advanced search. And I should say as well for anyone who's used not to putting in all of their terms at once, but running them in one at a time. So for example, some people may put in COVID-19 and then put in, let's go back and do it, may put in pandemic on its own. If you prefer to search like this because you're building a more complex search, you can absolutely do it still. What you will do is having run your lines in individually, go to your recent searches and you'll see there that you have them line by line with the ability Oh, I've left adoption in her life, that wasn't clever, but you have the option here to link them together. So this, this wouldn't be what I'd actually be doing with this search, but you just type in line two or line three, etc, etc. Of course, if you need help with anything on ASIA or any other databases, do let us know. Hopefully this quick start guide has given you a few pointers, but if you want that slightly deeper conversation around this, just drop me an email if you're in one of my areas or your librarian if you are in a different discipline area. So thanks very much. I'll see you in another database primer.